If you think corporations bought free speech before Now that they're human, they'll buy even more. Yeah, their money has it is dangerous to the flora to put stakes into the ground. Well, I discussed that with the arresting officers. I told them my right to speak of a political action outweighs the danger to a few of these grass plants mm -hmm. that you have not even bothered to, to mow. Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Populist Dialogues, a project of the Alliance for Democracy. Our purpose is to advance the mission of the Alliance for Democracy to create a just society based on a true democracy. I am your host, David Delk. Our guest today is Michael Mayo. Michael, among other activities, has been a candidate for the U.S. Congress running on the Pacific Green Party ticket here in Oregon. Michael recently was arrested by the Portland Police Department while exercising his First Amendment free speech rights in Portland's Mount Tabor Park, site of one of the city's open air water reservoirs. So, welcome to the show, Michael. Thank you. It's a very great pleasure to be here and to have the chance to uh, uh, increase the understanding of what, what is going on here in Portland. Yes, okay, yeah. So for those folks who are not in Portland or who may just not be paying that much attention, talk about uh, the situation with our open reservoirs and the city's plans about that. The city has for many years, uh, against popular opposition, uh, planned to cover the open reservoir system that we have. Our system presently is one of the purest waters in the country. We have a protected watershed and a pure gravity feed from the Bull Run Reservoir to the municipal reservoirs on heights around the city, which then will gravity feed to our, to our homes. This uh, prize-winning arrangement, it has been planned to spend a lot of money and produce less quality water by uh, burying the reservoirs, uh, putting covers on them. Okay, and this is in response to an EPA ruling? It is a requirement from the federal government called LT2 that uh, all reservoirs must be covered. It is unfunded mandate kind of, kind of requirement. The uh, city government has been equivocal in its opposition. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, to say, to say the <laughs> least, <laughs> you're a master of understatement there, <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, give us an idea of what the city, or what opponents of, of covering the reservoir is, what their idea is that the city could do. Uh, the city has a, um, a good reason not to have to cover the reservoirs because the LT2 requirement is put in place because of the um, uh, danger of uh, infestation of a reservoir from cryptosporidium. Cryptosporidium uh, causes uh, uh, immediate problems in the human digestive system and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a dangerous bug. Uh, other, what happened in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, I believe it was, was a, a, a sewage dump into the uh, uh, drinking water system and that's how they had a cryptosporidium incident. Our system is completely protected against that. The, all of the water coming from Bull Run Reservoir is nowhere near a sewage outlet. It's, it's gravity feed and here's our water here and here's the Willamette with the sewage. It's impossible to, co to connect the two. Right, yeah. Uh, there's a second reason. Yeah. Uh, for pragmatic reasons, this might not be a good time to enter, the, to, to have a, a city required to spend money. We might be uh, near bankruptcy and a city that has a very uh, system similar to ours has already won a 10-year delay, Syracuse, New York. It's about our size, it's about our, it's near kind of our system, and why can Syracuse, New York get a 10-year delay and our city, which has uh, at least as much political weight as Syracuse, New York, uh, cannot. Mm -hmm. There's a third reason. Uh, uh, we we uh, uh, believe that this is such a poorly scientifically based requirement that a, an examination, uh, an, instead of uh, something uh, uh, driven by terrorism or driven by jobs, 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 but a, a, an impartial examination will probably find that this requirement for blanket covering of all the reservoirs not, 
advisable. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that a delay will actually mean to the cancellation of LT2. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, good. Uh, so that kind of sets up, you know, why we're concerned about this and what you were doing at Mount Tabor Park. Mount Tabor Park, of course, is site of two of these open, open water, open air reservoirs. And there was a Occupy Mount Tabor uh, movement. There was. Uh, so uh, describe what happened. I'd, I'd like to just back up a bit sure. because we're yeah. on this line of explaining things. Mm -hmm. And you would suppose that the city council would be opposed to this. But on the contrary. Uh, the city council gave lip service, kind of like Obama gives lip service to our constitutional rights, and has driven ahead at every point and said, we're, we're uh, uh, fine with this, has made, uh, ha when they asked, when the feds asked for a schedule of when it would be done, on the dot, the city council came up with a schedule. When it was uh, scheduled to begin, it was uh, funded right away. The, uh, the, the opposition is non-existent. It is a totally, uh, a totally formality that they say that the, the, the majority of all of the population interested is very much in favor of keeping uh, the open, pure water supply we have and not spending $600 million to put it underground mm -hmm. and thereupon make it more likely to be infested with uh, dangerous uh, uh, organisms. Mm -hmm. So that being the case, that being the case that we had uh, several years progress, 10, 12 years of efforts to try to get the city not to enter this and the city government again and again thwarting our efforts, all that was left was a nonviolent civil disobedience. We had had in Occupy Portland uh, uh, 18 months ago a very successful act of civil disobedience and that same or a similarly connected group then said, let's have Occupy Mount Tabor. At the day that they are going to break ground, to start construction, and uh, uh, let us be at Mount Tabor as a community, and let us assert that this is what we want. And, and part of that was just to, uh, to um, create an event that would get press so that more and more people throughout the region would start talking about this because it has been, uh, well, the city had uh, issued a statement which essentially said, well, this is a done deal, and there's nothing more we can do. The city council had said they were not officially gone on record saying we are no longer going to contest uh, this, uh, this requirement. Which they had only half-heartedly done in the first they, place. They had, they had contested it only in theory and, in fact, had gone ahead on schedule. What the argument is, is that we just had a fluoride fight here in Portland. And whenever there was an actual level playing field, the anti-fluoride people said, here are the scientific facts. And the pro-fluoride people said, uh, our authority, we're smart, we're, we're, we know more than you. Mm -hmm. And the scientific facts outweighed the argument from authority. And the fluoride fight was won in a popular way. In the same way, if we have the chance to, on a level playing field, go uh, and uh, speak to the public and say, here are the facts about our water supply, here is the reason for the LT2 requirement, and here is the, the loss of hundreds of millions of dollars in addition to a loss of water quality, then this, oh, we got to do what the feds tell us, is going to be a very weak reply. Mm -hmm. But we don't have that now. It's, it's uh, uh, under the radar. Not very many people are aware of this uh, hundreds of millions of dollars being spent unnecessarily and in fact deleteriously to our water supply. Right, okay, yeah. So, we've set the stage uh -huh. and uh, uh, Occupy Mount Tabor was happening and you went there. Right. What happened? There is to have been an assembly of people who are opposed to uh, the covering of the reservoirs on July 12th of 2013. And I went there after having spoken to Jesse Sponberg on what time, uh, he told me at noon, I went there with banners from my party, the Pacific Green Party, as a supporter of the group, which is nonpartisan, I'm sure, to oppose the covering of the reservoirs. I arrived at noon and I set up a, a small sleeping bag, which I lay on, and I put up banners, one 
on stakes in the unmown part of the, of the uh, uh, passage, and the second uh, with a string hanging from a branch. Those were then the reasons that I was arrested. It is dangerous to the flora to put stakes into the ground. Well, I discussed that with the arresting officers. I told them my right to speak of a political action outweighs the danger to a few of these grass plants mm -hmm. that you have not even bothered to, to mow. Mm -hmm. And they did not answer me that argument. They merely told me that the rules are the rules and I must take down that, that banner hanging on a branch because of the danger it might cause to the pine needles and pull out those stakes because of the, it might kill a grass plant. And I told them this is a political action. I, I went through the whole thing. I said we have had no al alternative but to assemble and I am merely by my announcing that I'm the Pacific Green Party drawing people to this point where we can assemble and act together. Mm -hmm. I was then arrested for not following the... Actually, there's a long story about what I was arrested for, if you want me to go into. Yeah, we have, uh, we have about uh, 12 minutes left. I see. So just, Let's you know, not go into the long well, story. I, I, I was arrested yeah, and just in charge do it. with uh, not following the, the uh, order of a park ranger. A uh, half dozen uh, Portland police arrested me. This business of not following the orders of a ranger is just like, and I told them at the time, what happens in, in Middle, e Middle Ages? What happens in the Middle Ages? You, the church, find me to be a heretic. And so you turn me over to the secular arm and say, I have detected a heretic in our community. And you, the cleric, the park ranger, you didn't arrest me. No, it was the secular arm that did it. Uh -oh. But it's a merely way of handing the, passing the buck. So, so the, the park ranger said you're violating the rules or the law and, mm -hmm. uh, and therefore we can't arrest you but we'll call the Portland police right. in to arrest you. Right. Okay. I am, I am arrested clearly for asserting the right of uh, meeting in a public space on a day called for a, a nonviolent uh, uh, action of demonstration. Mm -hmm. I am arrested in a park and I am arrested for announcing that I'm the Pacific Green Party and all like-minded people, here we are. That's what I'm arrested for. Okay. And uh, that case comes uh, before the court on the 12th, no, on the, that's my son's birthday, on the 14th, <laughs> on the 14th of October. Okay, uh, all right, uh, so this, this program will already have aired by then, so you'll, you'll know. Uh, you'll know your punishment or, or, or your fate <laughs> by that time. Probably continued to the next day. <laughs> right, yes. Uh, so uh, talk, about, uh, talk about what happened after they arrested you, they put you in the car, mm -hmm. uh, and what happened between the time you were put in the car and your arrival at the jail. There was, when I was uh, in the car, an attempt to uh, draw me into conversation. And um, that did not make the police report. I guess there was nothing significant I had to say. In jail, I was put in a um, cell by myself, uh, uh, kept it in air conditioned 60 degrees, and uh, was isolated for a period of nine hours. And that because I uh, chose to uh, speak back to one of the guards. It just happens. In we have a system, a brutal anti-humane system, in the United States of jails, and I was just—I I got a minor taste of it. Is all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you elaborate on the taste <laughs> just a little bit? No, uh, no, no. I really think it's of, uh -huh. of very little importance, and I'm afraid I'm as as a as an answering to your question. I really think what we ought to move instead to is what the what the political system did. Charlie Hales, our mayor. Um, on the day of this thing, on July 12th, said, I don't want any of the demonstrators to drop poison into the reservoirs. That is the kind of, of uh, guilt by association and implication that Mr. Hales is full of. He doesn't want the homeless on our streets to uh, make love in public either. Well, gee, neither do I, Mr. Hales. 
The, the issue is that Mr. Hales and the, and the whole system was set up to crush any ability to get together as a population and protest peacefully. There were, not, there were six policemen uh, uh, arresting me. Why? Not because I was dangerous or anything, but because they had that number of policemen around. There were even more policemen on the, on the edges of the park patrolling. All of the streets leading to the park were shut for, to traffic. This is the efforts made to crush a popular movement, which is ac asking uh, for the government not to proceed uh, with business as usual. Mm -hmm. They arrest the, the leaders and uh, give them bogus charges. That's, what, that's what's happening here in Portland. And I will, <laughs> I will be quite, uh, 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 what should I say, outs outspoken mm -hmm. in my opposition, you can be sure. Mm -hmm. uh, there were two other people arrested that day, and uh, they were, they were uh, uh, younger and less, um, uh, less articulate people. Mm -hmm. I met one of them, and he's delighted that I'm in the docket with him. His name is Zimmerman. I will, he's on the, he also will come up before, uh, before charges on the 14th of October at the courthouse downtown. So uh, uh, there is a, uh, we have to move on with this. I've got other nonviolent civil disobedience things we can do. At the moment, the situation is, is a defeat for the popular party because of what happened at Mount Tabor on July 12th. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, after you were arrested, uh, this uh, uh, peaceful protest, occupation was going on. What was the outcome of the, of the, of the occupation? The outcome of the, of the uh, protest was that they uh, departed from Mount Tabor Park and held a meeting on the sidewalk in the street and then dispersed without any occupation of anything. Oh. Two days later, because that was dissatisfying to very many people who were saying, we had a thing going, why did you disperse? Two days later, a group of 20 or so were there near midnight. On a second time then, the leadership of the group uh, told them to disperse rather than risk arrest. So it is, it is as I said, um, been a, uh, it is not uh, uh, the positive thing you want. A, Nonviolent civil disobedience movement is working, and it is has to do with the post office, but uh, that's another story. Okay, I will right. just put that in. Okay, I, I, and now you've intrigued me because <laughs> I don't know. Uh, other than I, you know, I know this effort to to uh, uh, close the post offices down and turn them into a private uh, industry. Uh, and it, there's a there's a nonviolent protest movement led by a leadership that is skilled and and, and experienced as opposed to this leadership here in, mm -hmm. in Mount Tabor, which was uh, uh, selling wolf tickets before the event and then uh, frightened off at the, at the first sight of the police power. And that's not the way to win a confrontation. The way to win a confrontation is to be, be calm and absolutely responsible with anything you say. And when then you are met with police power, you resist. Mm -hmm. That's the way to win. Right. And so, in the end, you and two others were arrested. What were the other? Th what were the other two people arrested for? Uh, well, actually, I'm not. Ch charges change at uh -huh. the last minute without you being able to be informed of them. <laughs> oh. Charges charges can be varied in our system. Hmm. It how, is, how do it you is defend yourself the, against charges if you I, know what they are, or they can change? Okay, so when I appeared at my at my uh, indictment. Uh, a, a new charge was given. I'd been told I was for trespassing. And I said, what do you mean I didn't obey the uh, statement of the uh, park ranger? How come I'm supposed to plead guilty or not guilty without ever being told what I'm being charged with until just now? Mm -hmm. And the judge answered, I have uh, concerns that uh, this is the case, but illegally, the district attorney can change the charge at any time leading up until your indictment. You do not have to be informed up until your indictment and I said, well, that doesn't seem right by the laws of the United States that I don't have to be informed. And he gave me another week to decide whether or not. But they can change the charge. So I don't know exactly what charge is on the other two guys. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Because it, it took it, a while it, to know what my <laughs> charge was, let alone theirs. <laughs> right. At this point, when you go to this uh, trial? Yes, it uh, is a trial. It, it is a trial. Uh, you will know what charges are there. Not obeying uh, the order of a park ranger. Okay. Take down those signs. And I said, no, 
I, whereupon I was arrested. Okay. And, and the reason why you said no is because you had a constitutional free speech right which you were exercising. I explained it in some oh, detail. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, we have a few more minutes. I could go on about what the free speech business in, involves, but I think I've already covered that fact that, in my opinion, it was a defeat. It, yes, yeah. Uh -huh, right, yeah, yeah. Um, because the, the uh, I understood originally the intent was to have a mass arrest yes. of lots and lots of people, and in fact, That's three exactly people. what we could be discussing. A nonviolent civil disobedience movement starts with arrests, but if you just had one set, you would not have a movement. You start with, let's say, five people getting arrested, and the following day, 10 people are getting arrested, and the following day, 15. In any case, you are not going on a one-shot deal. You are going on a continuous campaign, mm -hmm. and that's what's happening in the post office. In the post office, the leadership of that group, Jamie Partridge, let me tell you that uh, you ought to have sure. uh, him here. Uh, he, uh, he has been on. There you go. <laughs> uh, uh, he and, and John Schweibert are leading a, a movement that is making uh, nonviolent civil disobedient uh, uh, statements that is directed and understandable to uh, uh, the U.S. Postal Service here in this city, although they're not getting publicity, Naturally not. I mean, our, our Oregonian wouldn't cover, wouldn't cover a, a, a union affairs, let alone a civil disobedient movement. Yeah. They are having great success at continuing a pointed, clear, anti-oppression uh, 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 attitude and uh, succeeding where our movement has, the movement that we have to do with Mount Tabor Reservoirs, mm -hmm. has uh, more or less dissolved into a talking club. Mm -hmm. So I am learning from my participation with this other uh, group. Right. Okay, great. Well, our time is up. And I'm delighted to have had the opportunity to uh, tell you wh what's happening with that Mount Tabor Reservoir uh, occupation as one of the three people arrested. Right. And uh, uh, we'll soon be finding out whether my defense will be accepted by the, by the district court or whether I will have to serve time in jail for being, for being found I will, guilty. Uh, I will look forward to talking with you more about that. So <laughs> thank you for being My here. My pleasure. Okay, great. Thank you, David. Good. So our guest today has been Michael Mayo, uh, recently arrested in a protest at Mount Tabor Park here in Portland, and we've been talking about his resulting experiences and his perspective on what makes a successful uh, protest movement. So. Don't forget that you can watch Populist Dialogues on YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash populistdialogues to view most of our past shows. And when you're there, click the subscribe button so that when a new program is uploaded, you will automatically receive an email notification. If you're watching on YouTube, you can help us expand our viewership. Contact your local cable access station and see how you can sponsor a weekly broadcast of our program. Most local stations are looking for good materials and we will welcome the suggestion. Populist Dialogues is a project of the Portland Alliance for Democracy. Learn more about us at afd-pdx.org and about our national organization at thealliancefordemocracy.org. Thank you to Roger Bates, Beth Kerwin, Dave King, Janet Morris, and Tom Thomas for their volunteer time getting us on the air. And thanks to all of you for watching. I hope that you'll watch again next week. Bye. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Our group is Healthcare for All Oregon, hcao.org. That is healthcare for every Oregonian. Our plan will decrease the cost of human suffering and death, prevent medical bankruptcies, and decrease medical costs and prevent insurance company denials. HCAO includes six principles. Universality, equitability, accountability, transparency, participation, and public good. Healthcare is a human right. We want to build a movement. Wow. We really need a movement of people to 
offset and to get rid of the corporate influence. It's our country, we need to take it back. If you think corporations bought free speech before, now that they're human, they'll buy even more. Yeah, their money has free speech to me, quite a shock. Cause I never heard my money talk. When a corporation has a colonoscopy, then I'll believe they're human like me.